Enemies to friends to lovers is another uh, real good one. Okay. Real right. slow bird, okay. multiple perspectives. Hey everyone, it's Presley at ActiveGames.com here, and today is our book club day, and we're going to be talking about They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. So if you haven't read this book, go read it right now. We're going to go very, 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 very spoilery. Yeah. It's gonna be a time. It's gonna be fun. The but first spoiler is they both die at the end. Well, it could be a lie. It could be a lie. It could be a lie. Um, it's not a lie. Yes, it is. Actually. Um, okay. Okay. So let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, so the first thing, which is kind of about this book. Okay. Okay, I'm going yeah. Okay. Is that this is actually one of my favorite book clubs oops, on YouTube, Explosion, who happened to be doing this book, and I totally didn't realize they're doing until it, after yeah. I finished oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. It's this month. It's last month's book, so they're going to cool. post a video about it soon, so that's pretty rad. That, that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, yeah, okay. Cool. So you want to give us a quick rundown of what it's about? All right. So they both die at the end is exactly what it sound like. sounds like. It's a book about Mateo and Rufus, who are these two boys who get contacted by Death Pass, which is this organization that tells you um, at midnight, at midnight, it tells you if that you're going to die on that day. If you're going to die on that day, this isn't randomly tell you that. It tells you if you're going to die on that day. And so they both figured out they're going to die on that day. And so they meet through an app called Last Friend, where you can yep. find someone else who's going to die on that day, or someone who just wants to console someone who's going to die on that day, or yep. by your couch or something. Mm -hmm. um, right. <laughs> so that's a part two. Okay. Okay. Notes um, about that. Yep. And so they meet and hang out for the rest of their end day, and they're called end days. And it was a, it was a good book. Yeah, so that's the gist of it, right? And so this, like I read some reviews and some people's comments on it, and um, one of the things that people didn't like about this book is one of the things I like most about this book. Which was what? So, like, science fiction yeah. in general. I'm not saying this is science fiction, but it's kind of science. science fiction in general, like good science fiction, I think, is about like you imagine one thing in the world is different. Mm. Like you've maybe made some discovery or some law of physics no longer applies or like something big happens. Yeah. And then you write about what the world looks like, like maybe a hundred years after that thing changed. Yeah. Like if we discovered something, like we discovered faster than light travel, mm -hmm. right? You don't necessarily write about us discovering faster than light travel. You write about what, what's the world like a hundred years after that, right? Yeah. And that's the beauty, like science fiction for me. Yeah. Like that's it's beautiful the way that it works that way. that way. And so, in this book, like you said, there's this group called Death Cats, and what they do, they have a bunch of operators. So it's like a uh, it's like a horrible telemarketing job, like the yeah. worst telemarketing job you could possibly imagine. Because there's down. people like in little cubicles with like little headsets on, and as soon as midnight crosses into the next day, you like 12:01 a.m. Mm -hmm. They get a list of all of the people that are going to die that day, and, and you know within the next 24 hours, and they call those people and like wake them up and let them know, that hey, gonna you're, you're going to die today. I'm really sorry to let you know. Um, you know, I can't tell you how, I can't tell you when, I can't tell you. It's just it, sometime in this day you're going to die, die. die, and that's it, right? Um, and so it's a horrible job, and they talk a little bit about the people who have this horrible job to yeah. do this, and how the suicide rate is high among like death cast operators mm -hmm. and stuff, and so. Um, what they never explain in the book is how Death Cast came to be. Yeah. How do they know that you're going to die that day? Do they know more, but they don't tell you? Like, do they yeah. know how you're going to die and when you're going to die that day, but they don't tell you? Like, they're not clear in that. Um, and they never touch on that. And a lot of the reviews I read, like, people were really I, mad that okay. they didn't talk about it. But I loved it because it was just, like, you, you assume Death Cast has been around for a long time. Yeah. And people don't really talk about that. Like it's not a thing, it's just you assume this is the world in which we live. Yeah. And and so you kind of move forward. And the book is just not about how death cast works, right? Never the really book is about the, the impact, right? You never really feel like, I wonder how the printing press was invented so I could read this. Like that's not the thing that you do. <laughs> now, when you do that in yeah. school. Like some sci like some sci fi you do it. some science fiction stuff does it well. Like yeah. they do touch on the key discovery and how it works. It's like yeah. you have the hard sci fi that wants to talk about the details of a lot of those things. But I think really great, like story driven and character driven science fiction, it doesn't matter. Oh, like yeah. it's a mechanic to allow you to tell this story about these characters. And what I think they did beautifully here, right? Uh, you were talking about like the, somebody trying to buy your couch because <laughs> you're a Decker, right? Yeah. Um, I think they're called Deckers. They are called Deckers. And it took me a long time to figure out why they're called Deckers. I didn't. You never figured it out? No. It is I the, about Blade Runner. No, it is the, the shipping name for Death Cast. Oh. I think oh. Decker. Decker. Decasters. Decker. Decker. 
I think. It's like, I just came up with that while I was taking my notes. If you ship death and If you <laughs> ship death and cast, you might come up with Decker. <laughs> then you get Decker. So yeah. I think that's where it came from. Because okay. the whole book, I was like, why do they call them Deckers? Why I was like, Blade Runner? Yeah, I don't know. So, I, yeah, that, you know, I always think Blade Runner too. But, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's because it's death and cast. Like, yeah. death casters. Decker. Turned into That makes sense. That's so what I guess. Okay. Uh, and so... What I think they did beautifully was you've got these deckers, and if you think about okay, let's say Deathcast has been around for 100 years or 50 years or 20 years or whatever, what what like cottage industries would spin up around that? Yeah. And so one of the things I loved in the book is they have uh, so the heralds are the people that call you. Yeah. That's what they call the operators. That's they call and tell you. I thought that was really cool. They have um, heralds spell H. So uh, uh, final friend that you mentioned. Last so there's friend. a last friend. There's an app that you can use yeah, and like, you can sign up either as a Decker or as someone who wants to hang out with a Decker on yeah. their last day. And and so it's almost like a dating site, like a matchmaking there site. A, well, there's a different one that's about people that want to sleep with a Decker. Yeah. Like there's like a morbid like dating, <laughs> dating really app. Um, we'll there, are, to pay for it. there are people who use the app, like literally one person said, hey, uh, I, I feel terrible that you're going to die today. You wouldn't happen to have a nice three-person sofa that you're going to need to <laughs> yeah, get rid right. of in your last day, right? Um, there, were, there were all kinds of like um, uh, yeah. like fetish stuff almost going yeah. on around it. There was Like it was really the, the thought that went into what would this app look like. I thought it was really cool. Um, there's a thing called Make a Memory. Oh. Where you can go and experience like skydiving, it's not like a virtual reality sort of experience, and so without the danger of having to do it, it's not very good though. We'll, we'll talk about that in yeah. a second. Um, there's uh, like restaurants and different places have Decker deals, yeah. and so if it's your last day and you can prove that you're a Decker, then you get like half off your meal or something. It reminded me of like Kama Aina discounts where we live in Hawaii. Um, and so just, I loved the amount of thought that went into right. what is the, like all that changed in the world is that suddenly we know what day you're going to die and we call and let you know. Okay. And then all of this stuff sort of spun out and like the, the thought of world building of what would change in the world and what industries would spin up around that. I thought it was brilliant. Yes. Like some people really complained about not knowing how Decker, how, not how the death cash works, but I loved it. Do you have a theory? Oh, how death cash works? Yes. I don't. I do. Oh, cool. Let I do. It. My theory right. is that um, it's population control, and that that's like yeah. a, it's a pretty popular theory. Yeah, right. Popular as in two people think about it. There's not enough. Of well, like, like they are killing people. Yes, they yeah, are sure. staging incidents for people to die. Sure. And so that was my theory because, like, it's just it's too. Like, I think they may have mentioned that in the book, like in passing, that maybe they're the ones that are actually killing people or something. Yeah. But um, I think that was in one of Mateo's freakouts. At some point. Or is it like they have enough sort of premonition that they can set the circumstances? Like they're choosing yeah. the people that are going to die, no. but they're causing their deaths through like more subtle ways. You know what it reminds me of? What? Nyx from Dark Matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like Nyx. Yeah. It's like her and her whole yeah. thing. Um, but yeah, that was my, my think. My think. My think mm -hmm. was that it's um, population control. Because assuming this is like sort of in the future, yeah. um, then population control would certainly be an issue. And then but but what about solving. what about people that? I mean, I assume even if that was the case, people would die that they didn't kill, That's and those fair. people wouldn't get the call. That's fair. And that would seem weird. It seems like everybody who's going to die that day gets the but call. But if you die and you don't get the call, then who's gonna? Talk about it. I guess it's all well, no, like, yeah, if, like I got if, if I died today and I didn't mention this morning, oh, by the way, I got the call, you guys might be like, well, that's, that's kind of weird. Right, but then it also seems Why like it's a popular we? thing in culture to not tell anyone. Yeah, right. Yeah, but so well, there's a whole, a whole thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Whole thing. Anyway, we don't know how we don't know how that gets works, but we that's what, and again, that's cool. it, it has like a very little bearing on, on the actual book. But I thought it was it was boring yeah. because we've of been that. talking about that for a little bit. So, the, yeah, so I think that the um. The interesting thing, so let's talk about make, make memory, right? Okay. Just real quick, since we switched our touchdown. Why are we not talking about the characters in this book? No, we, we will. And this is kind of part of it. So, uh, the make a memory, like I said, is, is these big, like, amphitheater kind of things almost, yeah. or like stadiums that you can go, and they have different rooms set up where you can have these virtual reality experiences. Yeah. And if you want to go skydiving, or if you want to swim with sharks, or you want to be Superman, I guess, whatever. Oh, they actually you didn't could, have fictional ones yet. Oh, okay, nice. yeah. So you could do those things, but you could do it in a safe way, because everyone who's a Decker yeah. turns out to be like super conservative and, and wants to be safe because Don't they're afraid the everything Don't that they could do the might be the thing that kills them that day. Even though they know they're going to die that day, it was like a really interesting like psychological thing. Like even though you know you're going, like I would probably want to actually go skydiving. 
Like if I knew I was gonna die, gonna like die even if skydiving would kill me, then I would still want to do go skydiving. I don't want to die skydiving. It just doesn't seem fun. Yeah, well, none of it seems fun. But the 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 thing is, they went and they did it, mm. and it was lame. Yeah, it was so lame. Right. And like to me, the reason I want to talk about that first, and then we'll talk about the details, was that that is the whole book. <laughs> like the whole book is you should live your life. Yeah. And you should really live your life. Yeah. And so like this idea, you know, there's the, the, the like cliche saying, live every day like it's your yeah. last, right? Like these people know it's their last day. And they're not living it like it's their and, last day. Well, and, and they're not, like they should be. And they're trying to build these things. And then you're trying to build fake memories and adventures on your yeah. last day. And it's, it's unsatisfying. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the building of the life in this 24 hours. And it's the relationship that they build together that matters and sort of feels like the first time that they were ever alive, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's this quote at the end where uh, when they end up together, spoiler alert, <laughs> oh, uh, that's not a spoiler. In, in like the, uh, yeah. in the apartment yeah. and they're saying, I don't want my story to be like two guys met and they fell in love and they died. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, that's not our story. Our story is two guys met and they fell in love and they lived. Right? And even though it was just for that one day, like that's when they were alive and that's when they lived. And they, after they met and fell in love is the time that they were alive. Adam Silver right? likes murdering me and my tiny mm. gay heart. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful sentiment, right? Yes. Like they met and they loved. No, 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 that's not what happened. We lived. We lived. Yeah. Our, we finally lived our lives for a day. And, and like that's the, the whole book is sort of about Mr. them slowly moving from their meat cute yes. to their death cute. <laughs> Not really. That wasn't really cute. They could have done it more cutely. Okay, so that's that, those are my like huge thoughts those about the, huge the, thoughts. the details of the book. I, I, I know you want to. I know you want to talk about their relationship. I don't want to talk about them as characters. No, I will say they did. A, I think they did a beautiful job, like yes. building this relationship in a realistic way, because they're very polar opposite characters okay. in the way they come together over the course of the book. Even though like one of them sort of knows. It is like it's about time. Like, it's I'm, about waiting, like I'm not gonna make the move, you have to make the move, and I'm waiting for you to do that. Um, like I thought that the way they, they structured that because I know that like it's one of your favorite stories is the, the well no not gang, gang but like the, the, the platonic friends that turn into friends. not Dude. platonic lovers. friends. Right? Yeah. Friends to lovers. Friends to lovers. Okay. Every book is like even if the book if they don't actually get to that part in the book, then Presley's continuation oh, yeah. of the book friends ends to up lovers. Friends to Lovers. Friends to Lovers. So this is this is this is classic and, and very well done Friends to Lovers. Yes. Although Enemies to Friends to Lovers is another uh, real good yeah. one. Okay. Real right. slow burn, okay. multiple perspectives. So I, 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 I hand it over to you. Okay. Um, welcome to my gay corner. Uh, we're going to be talking about gay now. Um, okay, so first of all, I love that Mateo is just a very soft character, a very good, yeah. good boy. Yeah. And it's super easy to do that real bad. Yeah, like to make an uwu soft boy that's yeah. all soft and yeah. innocent into the world. Right. And like they didn't do that with him, and while he was still like an innocent and nice character, he wasn't like overdoing it. And like a yeah. new no, totally agree. boy, and I love that. He he even realized he was being a little <laughs> too soft. soft and so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He jumped off the bike. He did. Don't know. Don't know. Um, and then Rufus, I I just will stand because it's the kind of character that I always like, where it's just like a mean boy who's not a mean boy anymore. Yeah. That's like half of the characters I stand. The bad so, boy with a heart of gold. Yep, that's my character <laughs> stand. It's the straightest thing for me to ever stand, but I will not stop. Right. I love it. I love it so much, I can't get any more. Yeah, he was really interesting because I thought, like, he was, like, at the same time he was kind of a victim of his circumstances. Yeah. Like, the life that he had led and, like, you, this horrible story you hear that I'll mention in a second. Um, you know, he, he comes off of this really rough character. He's in a gang, kind of. A um, little bit. And he, yeah, there's this thing going on. But it's a nice one. Um, and, but at the same time, he is so, like, self-reflective that he knows that yeah. he's a victim of his circumstances, yeah. right? And it's kind of an interesting thing to see because a lot of times people who are victims of circumstance don't necessarily realize it. Yeah. And so seeing his like self-realization that he is a victim and that he's always wanted to be better and do better for himself but didn't really know how or didn't have the incentive to do it. Mm -hmm. And that Mateo is kind of the, the drive for him to finally, like in his last day, he becomes the person he wanted to be. Yeah. Beautifully done. It's Love so it. well done. And so he uh, he ended up actually uh, 
the, the horrible day that was described in, in the book, like one of the most impactful things for me was like he wakes up, you know, at, at, in the morning when he's a kid mm -hmm. and his mom and dad and what was sister? Older sister. Older sister all got the call from death cast and he didn't. Yeah. And like that, just imagining what that would be like. And then they end up like they're in a car accident. They drive off a bridge. He gets out of the car. Nobody else gets out of the car and they, they drown. And he's they relaxed. don't even yeah, because they just know that it's, oh, this must be it. This is, we got the call. Um, and so, like, that was just, like, you see how that could lead to him being in this, uh, uh, like, orphanage and mm -hmm. bonding together with these other kids and doing these. I used to actually, I was going to mention this, I, I've always, Daddy always has a story about that. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. About so that was a, uh, no, 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 that was like a, a boy's town. This, this place in Memphis. Boy town. That was kind of like what they're describing, right? So it was for, I don't think so. Boy town. It, boys town. Oh, boys town. Yeah, it was, uh, it was sort of, you know, like the, the, the troubled youth boy halfway house kind of thing, yeah. right? And I was buddies with a group of friends that yeah. lived there that were a little, you know, on the rough side. But <laughs> no, I assume there, were some, there were some juvenile delinquents for yeah. sure in that group of people that I hung out with and, and, and ran with. Um, and so it like it felt very real to me. Like they made a family. Yeah. Like the Plutos, oh, right? Family. They like built it was a totally a found family and like that relationship was so strong and I saw it in those guys. And like I was even though we were friends and we hung out and we did a lot of stuff, I was not part of that group, right? Yeah. Because I had a family and I went home at night to my family and they went home at night to Boys Town. Sometimes they didn't, but well, they supposed to. So, um, the, uh, uh, so yeah, like I, I could see like the reality of that writing about the way the flu does kind of work together. Yeah, so. Found Family kills me at this yeah. time. Yep. I love it so much. Yes. And it's really interesting to see Found Family outside of main characters in the book. Right. Which is, oh, yeah, yeah usually yeah. you see Found Family True. in the main characters. That's a really good point. Supporting characters in the Found Family. That's point. so cool. Yeah, also, something I don't think you you haven't mentioned yet, which I expected you would notice, is that the only times they use first person are for Mateo and Rufus, and every other chapter is written in third person. Oh, I, didn't, I did not notice so, that. So, yeah, that's a thing that I noticed while I was on my second read. I read yeah, quite a bit of it yep. again, and so I thought that was really interesting. Because it keeps it very personal with them, but you can also tell the other character stories. Yeah, no, it's really it's good. So cool. Like the voices just sound really, felt really strong to me. I, I did it as an audio book. Yeah. I thought it was a great audio book performance. You read it. Um, it and, and so I, I thought, yeah, both ways is probably a really good way to consume this. It's um, just, please consume it. Yeah, so I think that, like, my sort of final thoughts on this, just oh, so no. I don't talk for No, no, we'll, we'll keep, I, I'm saying my final bit, oh, okay. and then I'll let you do it. Um, is that it, it's interesting in that you do know because of the title that they're both going to die at the end, right? And because they both get the call from Death Cash at the beginning, right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, there's this thought about, well, is this even worth reading? Like, I know what's going to happen, right? And But the book is just so much about, like, what happens, what that journey is in the last day, how the characters transform, and they both transform. They both have character arcs during this 24-hour yeah. period. They both end up in this really amazing place. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I don't know, I, I think it's, like, I like that. Yeah. Like, it is... The again, like when you talk about it, it's, it's the journey, it's not the destination, right? So right from the beginning, the you know, the, the author is saying, look, don't worry about. It. Like I'm telling you now, they're both gonna die, right? They both got the call, they're both gonna die. There's a little bit of talk about, hey, well, maybe we'll be the first people ever that beat Death Cast, right? Hi. And so there's a, but they're saying I am taking the destination out of the equation for you, so you can focus on the journey. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. I love that. Love I was it. gonna say, yeah, I had something about that. Okay. That's just that's amazing. Um, well, it was exactly what you said. Yeah. So, I don't know, not anymore. Right. Okay, sorry. Um, sorry. But I did. So, yeah, it's just, it's fantastic that they did that. Although, it never explicitly says that either of them died. It, well, like, what, what do you mean, it doesn't say? The book. Well, Ruf, you know, Rufus calls uh, and tells. But that's Rufus's friend. Mateo's friend. Well, right. Yeah, but that it doesn't say he died. It depends on what you say it is. <laughs> Mateo said he died. <laughs> well, I guess he did. Yeah. But you don't know. <laughs> you yes, don't you do. know. This is now you're not. ruining the whole idea about it's the journey, That's not the true. destination. But also, uh, I can do that. I can do what I want because I want more of them. Um, yeah, there's not enough fix it pick on AM3 for me, to, so I cried mm. for way longer than I should have because <laughs> I couldn't have fixed it. Yeah, um, just, yeah there's, there's, there's a definitely a tear drum in several places. Oh, yes. I cried like a lot reading this yeah. book. Um, but I just, I love this relationship so much. I've been talking for a long time. We've been talking for a long time about this stuff. Yeah. But I just, I love this relationship so much and the way it's pursued. And it starts out 
really interestingly where when um, Mateo is asking these like, really in kind of invasive questions to Rufus, and he has, and Rufus has the most realistic depiction of just like gay, like, uh, which is a mood experience. I mean, I knew what that just was. <laughs> it's like when straight people are asking you a bunch of really invasive questions uh, about uh, your sexuality, uh -huh. that is a thing that we uh, uh, experience okay. all the time. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah. All the time. And it was super realistic. I did think it was, yeah, one of the things like the condensed, I wrote in my note, I don't see it in my notes now, but I did write about this like condensed relationship development, like yeah. something that probably, you know, took me and mommy like a year to go through all of these like small conversations and learn these things about each other and sort of get to a place where we were comfortable and knew that we were going to be with each other forever. Yeah. Um, like they did most of those same things. They just did it in a very accelerated and condensed way. Yeah. And sort of it was a really, it was a cool way to sort of convey that it doesn't necessarily have to take all that time. But like, right. And so they were just kind of firing questions at each other. And they I mean, were also both kind of like, well, you know, there's no reason to lie about this. Yeah. And like, so let's just, yeah, we want to talk, yeah, we're going to talk about this. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's, yeah. let's get it out of the way. Yeah, right? So it was kind of, it, it wasn't like an artificially fast, like, oh, they, oh, suddenly they're, they're, they're in love. Right. You, you saw this entire like relationship oh, okay. development okay. thing happen over the course I mean, of the day. Been. And they didn't fall in love like at 10 o'clock in the morning no. and then spend a day together. Like you watched the, the story was about them slowly sort of falling in love. I know. And then at, at the at the end is when they got not at the very end, but oh, towards the end is when they got. Um but I love that Rufus just sort of knew what was up like the whole time. Yeah. Like, I never ever see that in most yeah. burn stuff. Yeah. It's not they it's, both slow burn. Yeah, they both slow burn, mm -hmm. and they're not. There's never a point of I know you like me at the same time. Right. Which is obviously it's always real good reading that moment where they both realize like it's always real good stuff. Yeah. yeah. But oh, this was really good too. Just like Rufus knowing what was up. Well, it's because, because it didn't, I did too. Like they didn't beat you over the head with it. Like they yeah. weren't like every other line okay. like oh, in Rufus's oh, head oh. being like, okay, I know what's going on. Okay. Come on, like, you know, just. Every once in a while, he would be like, like when, like the first kiss, or was it, right? Yeah, when he's like, okay, it's, it's about time. Yeah, like there was that, and then there was one line a little bit earlier where he's like, I knew where, I know where this is headed, but I'm not gonna make the move, I'm gonna wait for him. Yeah. And that's kind of it, like I remember like two and that's things actually that. A really nice sentiment, because sentiment. Yeah. Sentiment. Yeah. yeah. You know? no, I, because it's like he is. He's not even sure if Mateo, if he's yeah. reading signs right, and if Mateo right. wants to do it, and so he's leaving it alone. Yeah. And that's real good. And that's not something you see in characters like him a lot. Yep. And that's my number one pet peeve about characters that are written like this, is they're way too forceful, mm -hmm. and they're way too, like, rude mm -hmm. about it. And I know it's supposed to show that they were, they're, like, a bad person, and they're becoming better. But it usually is just executed like it's a bad person. Yes. Who's pretending to be better. No, and they it. didn't do it that time, and I love it. Cool. I love it so much. Alright, so a good book to kick off book club again? Yes, yeah. definitely. One of the best Please I've read in a while. It. Yeah. It's a fast read. It, it's real easy yeah. to kind of carry through. Like, Whenever I say it's a fast read, now I think about three o'clock time. <laughs> like this. Always my favorite. His book report. Fast read. Fast, well, angry. How yeah. long has it been since? How many times do you say? Have you said fast read? Have you seen that movie? Oh, a lot. A lot. I say it, I say it about every book now. Right. Because if you read it, like fast. I so much. Uh, yeah, so it's a really, it's a great book. It's it's easy to read. It's a little bit emotional, a little um, but but it's worth doing. It's we, a lot. Emotional. I definitely recommend. Yes, it. yes. Read it. Go Listen read it. to it. I love it. Yeah. Um, it's super nice. Oh, and rapid up fact yeah. is uh, Adam Silvera is writing something with I think her name is Becky Alvarez. I'm not gonna name her because I don't remember her name. Mm. Who is the author of Sound vs. the Whole Sacred Agenda? Oh, really? They're doing together. like a collaboration thing. Yes, oh, that's I'm awesome. So Okay. Here it said, well, that'll probably be a book club book. Yes, I definitely want to read some of Adam, Adam Silvera's Adam Silvera's other work. Yeah. Right, you want to talk about what we're going to read next? Yes, uh, we are reading reading <laughs> reading seriously or seriously depending how you, on how you say it by Madeline Miller, mm -hmm. and I am very very excited to read it. You've already started it. I've well, started the audio, and it is a phenomenal audio audio book. It's yes. one of the best audio books that I have listened to in in a while, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's like it's just beautifully narrated, mm -hmm. really sucks you in. Like it's I'm I'm very excited about this. Yeah, I heard it's really good. It's written by the same person that wrote Song of Achilles. Hey, she said it right. <laughs> okay, so I know Achilles' name is not Achilles. I know that, but when I read it, I always want to say Achilles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, cause I, oh, because you're not reading it, you're saying it right now. Yeah, because yeah. I'm not reading it. Yeah. Um, but anyways, same person that wrote Song of Achilles, which I've heard is also really good, and I love Achilles. So it's a really, this is a, a like, first person, uh, sort of, it's, it reads like a historical fiction 
first person narrative of Cersei's life. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Really, really cool. And it's it's really cool. Like yeah, you're getting to hear her perspective on all of these myths that I have learned and, and know about yeah. is, is pretty special. Love it. I, really, I can't wait to talk about this one. I'm super excited just to talk about Cersei in general. Yeah, so July. Well, this July. is what we're talking about. Go get it. Go Birthday get it. Month. It's fantastic. I recommend the audio book because I love it. I haven't read either, so yeah. I can't recommend it yet, but I think it's going to be great. I would read anything about Cersei, so mm. valid. Awesome. All right. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to press that subscribe button down below to see more videos like this. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.